Welcome to the Dose of Courage podcast, a podcast where I teach purpose-driven women the principles and habits of courageous living. Keep listening. I promise you will become bolder, more confident, and courageous enough to be who God has called you to be, do what God has called you to do, and take possession of everything God said you could have without apology or hesitation. Be sure to join us in the Dose of Courage community on Facebook to connect and continue the conversation. I'm your host, Courage Molina, faith coach, pastor, and everyone's favorite Bible teacher. Let's go. What's up? So glad. I feel like, don't call it a comeback. What? I've been here for years. Um, Yes, listen, I'm so excited. It's been a minute. It has been quite some time since we've had a podcast, a new podcast episode. And so I'm so grateful that you guys are here. I also feel like singing again. Um, Been gone for a minute. Now I'm back with the jump off. Goose everywhere. Case up, jump off. No, y'all don't want to hear me sing? Okay, cool. Listen, but I'm so excited to be back here uh, with the podcast. Those of Courage community, y'all are so super amazing. Um, I just love the way you continue to support as your girl is growing out here in these podcasting streets. Now, this is the first podcast in a long time. And so I just thought, uh, if you're brand new, what's up? <laughs> if you're brand new, hi, so glad that you're here. <laughs> Go ahead and subscribe to the podcast um, or the YouTube channel, however you are listening to this amazing podcast. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. You will not regret it. Um, this new season of Dose of Courage podcast is honestly the best yet. I just feel like this is the best season I have literally ever had as a podcast host. And if you stick around, you'll see why. All right. So I thought it's been a long time and it's not something I really talk about a ton of anymore, but I don't want y'all to think that anything's changed, right? So I'm still a woman who has said yes to my call. I'm still a woman who is um, chasing her purpose. Um, being who God has called me to be every single day, doing the things that God is calling me to do because I intend to take possession of the promises of God on this side, right? On, in the land of the living, you hear me? And uh, one of the things, or, you know, I used to talk about all the time are the power principles of courageous living, especially in the beginning. I talked about it um, every week. There was something that we talked about and I just feel like, I haven't really given them any shine. Like, um, I don't want you to think that they're done or I've moved on from them. The power principles of courageous living, let me tell you something. They still have power. I'm in mean, 2013, you know, when I was depressed and my marriage was a mess and I felt unfulfilled that's when I discovered the power principles, right? And that's what helped me to overcome depression, save my marriage, and take back my life. The power principles, they worked then. In 2017, I quit my job following the Lord, you know, (laughs) following my faith. I quit my job. It's when I wrote the book. Um, The principles were working then because even though the principles had helped me to overcome depression. I kind of got in this space where I was like, oh, okay, I know how this works now. I'm going to be using the principles and it's going to be all good in the hood, which we know it's never going to be all good in the hood, but we low key think it's going to be all good in the hood, right? And so I quit my job to pursue um, entrepreneurship full time. I really felt led to do so. And things just did not go the way I thought, even during writing the book. You know, I wrote the book, Power Principles of Courageous Living, my first year as a full time entrepreneur. And the original title was How I Overcame Depression, Saved My Marriage, and Took Back My Life. But during the process of quitting my job, my husband lost his job, writing the book, refusing to go back to work. I just didn't feel led. I was like, I have got to see this through. My life was felt like it was falling apart while I was writing a book about how the principles had helped me to put my life back together. Um, so much so that I changed the title of the book because I didn't think 
that my marriage was going to survive this time. I didn't think my marriage was going to survive um, entrepreneurship and um, all the feelings that kind of came with it. But guess what? The Power Principles worked. Um, I did change the name of the book, Power Principles, Courageous Living, How I Overcame Depression and Took Back My Life. Unless you ordered a pre, like unless you were part of that pre-order error, then you did not get, you know, you didn't get uh, to see that married part it was taken out for you. But you know what? Um, the principle still worked. And, and so we, I got through that. We got through that. We're still married, y'all. We got through that. 2019, I started working with the Patrice Washington as a coach and her mastery and mentor, uh, mastery and mentor, her mastery and momentum program. Uh, I was mastermind. I started working with her in January of 2019, which was amazing, right? It was like, oh my gosh, I've listened to her podcast. Actually in 2017, when I quit my job, she was at the first conference that I went to. Like I quit my job June 13th, school was out. I think the conference was like June 15th or June 17th. And that is where I met her and um, continue to kind of just follow her, listening to her podcast. So it was absolutely a godsend to be able to work with um, Patrice in 2019. It was like, this is the best thing ever. Um, guess what, though? That entered in a lot of imposter syndrome, feeling like, okay, I know I've been doing this work and I know that what I say I believe, I actually believe and I live and all of these things, but things were still rough financially. We, I still had not replaced my income. Um, my husband's income was still unstable. And so it was still kind of a difficult space. We were not like, you know, changing up the game financially. We were not changing up the game financially. We were still struggling. Even with me working with Patrice, um, I hadn't replaced my income and with my husband and income being cut in half, we were still struggling. And in addition to that, I, I dealt with imposter syndrome, feeling like, you know, I'm ill-equipped and unworthy to be working shoulder to shoulder with Patrice. And she was, she is and has always been a woman of integrity. She's always been kind. She never treated me like the help. But sometimes people can treat you well, and because of your own insecurities, you still feel like you are trying to, like, I felt like I was auditioning for a part she'd already given me, you know? And so I just, I wasn't showing up well. I didn't feel great. Um, I'm not saying I felt horrible. I'm saying it was a different level. I wasn't depressed, right? I want to be clear here. I wasn't depressed. It was a new and different struggle, it was a new and different frustration that I wouldn't have had had I not been blessed with the opportunity. Sometimes we get into a new space and there is a frustration that comes with learning how to navigate that new space. It doesn't mean that you're still the same person you were. It doesn't mean that you haven't grown. So I don't want y'all to, don't, don't get it twisted, okay? I wasn't depressed. I didn't have low self-esteem. I didn't have any of that. But I was in a new space and I was, um, you know, struggling to get my footing. Do you know what I used to get my footing? The principles. I went back to the power principles of courageous living. And guess what? They still worked. It's 2021 and I still work with Patrice. I feel like I add more value today than I ever did. <laughs> Uh, being a part of her team, working with her. I'm um, in 2019. It was because I used the principles, right? Because I still use the principles. I didn't just say, oh, that's only for when I'm depressed. That's not for when I have a, an amazing opportunity. No, the principles, they still work then. And because of that, I was able to um, really take the take advantage of the opportunity that I had to be mentored by her. Not just to work with her, but I was in close relationship, close proximity to be mentored by her. It required for me to ask questions and ask for support. Um, then I went through Purpose to Platform, which I'm now a coach in, but I went through Purpose to Platform and Baby. In 2019, because I used the principles and they allowed me to show up and they continued to remind me of who I am and all these things, I went through Purpose to Platform. And from there, I birthed 
um, courageous, the courage, I think it was like the courage circle or the courageous circle. It's now courageous discipleship, but then it was called something else. It was like the courage circle. I think is what I called it. The courage circle. Um, it birthed that and it is still a program that has been revised, but it's still the foundation of that program was made and created in 2019. And I've run that program several times a year since then. Do you hear what I'm telling you? The principles work then. Enter 2020 and here comes a, you know, panoramic. <laughs> here comes a panoramic. Shuts the world down. Um, in, introduces, invites into the home a level of, in, of anxiety that I that I haven't seen in a long time. That I ever, that I never saw. Probably I don't think I've ever had that level of anxiety. Um, and if I did, if it was always in me, this certainly help it to break out <laughs> the panorama, uh, the panoramic in 2020. And so I still use the principles, though, in 2020. And in 2020, I launched a new program um, to help supplement the women who had come through the programs that I was running over and over again for the first time in life, not creating brand new programs. Um, I made more money the third quarter fourth quarter, the fourth quarter, third and fourth quarter of 2020 than I had <laughs> all year long. Um, it was insane. Uh, 2020 was another year that was difficult for us financially with the pandemic and us, you know, my husband's work being shut down because of the pandemic and him needing to go to Florida to get work. That was difficult for us. Um, our marriage was struggling again in 2020, um, into 2019, maybe 2020 things were difficult for us again, or still maybe, maybe that's a better still. They were still like, we hadn't gotten back all the way good um, since I had quit, since like a year after I had quit my job. We weren't back at a good place. We were good when I quit and for like a year after I quit, but then we was back in a bad space, like the writing of the book and that, that whole process, whenever that was really coming out, that was a difficult time. And we, we never really got right. So we, we had a rough couple years in our marriage. There were certainly good times, but it wasn't like it was before. Um, but do you know what? The principles worked in 2020, allowing me to stay true to who I am and to trust God and to do the things he's calling me to do and to follow his instruction, even when it looked crazy. And so I was able to increase my income. Um, my husband and I, by the end of 2020, were closer than we've really ever been. Um, if I'm honest, we are closer than we have ever been. He's my man. My boo, my bae, like, yeah, okay, I see you. <laughs> I'm always skinning and grinning and looking at him. He's like, why are you always looking at me like that? I'm like, because you look good. He's like, I know. <laughs> he just like to hear me say it. So, um, you know, the principles worked still. It wasn't just for like back then. And fast forward, like now we're here, it's 2021. Your girl is securing the bag. It took all of 20, it took all this year for me to really look at my numbers and be like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Your girl is actually out here securing the bag. Wait, what? End of 2020 launched a Bible study online. If y'all have been rocking with me for a long time, then you know I've always led Bible study kind of off and on, um, either for a church or through a church, sometimes just at my house without um, coming through a church or whatever. And so all of these things have just grown. And in 2021, I'm, I'm really seeing the fruit of some of the things, some of the seeds that I planted so long ago. And um, I keep looking down. I know if you're watching on YouTube, because my notes are down there. Just want to make sure I stay on task. I'm sorry, y'all. Secure the bag. I secure the bag. The business um, in 2021, in the first six months of 2021, I had already doubled my 2020 income. I'm going to say that again. In the first six months, I made in six months what it took me all year to make in 20. I made more, actually. I more than doubled, just to be on, just to be clear. And 
in the first six months of 2021, I made what it took me all year to make in 2020. And the last quarter of 2020 was probably my most successful quarter up until that point. Um, so it was, needless to say, it's a different world, right? It's just, it's different. But I don't want you to think that the principle, like I'm, I still use, because this is a courageous living. So I'm still using the principles. Um, my marriage is better than ever. I started a church. What's up? You can call me pastor. But I prefer courage, but yeah, I'll let you girl. <laughs> yes, I know. It's so it's crazy. Um, started an online global church for women in 2021. Um, this year. Dose of Courage Community is an online global church for women where we do church differently by divine design. Y'all like that? That's good, right? And it's true too. Um, it's not just something. It's not just something that you know. I'm saying I came up with. It's also the truth. And so the principles still work. The principles still work. And um, you know, let's. I know I've taken a long time to give you like this is probably like the longest intro ever. But I just want you to understand that the principles still work. So. Principle number one, listen, they've been revised a bit, right? Power principles. Principles are really like, if you think about what is a principle, principle is a fundamental truth. It's fundamentally true. And so these principles that I want to share with you are fundamentally true for courageous living. Okay? Your true identity is found in Christ alone. Throughout all of these years, all of those times that I shared with you, every time I went back to the first principle, which is like, I am not my income. I am not my role. I am not my situation. I am not my circumstance. I am not what I have done. I am not what has been done to me. Every time I went back to that over those years, 2013, through 2017, and the 19, and 2020, 2021, I am not... I'm not even, I'm not even who I am right now. Do you understand? I'm not even my circumstance and my situation right now. I know sometimes we think we are our situation. So like I'm rich or I'm this. No, I'm none of those things. Do you know, you know why? Do you know why that's not my identity? Because then my identity changes all the time. But when you realize that your true identity is found in Christ alone, then whether I am motherless, fatherless, childless, spouseless, jobless, penniless, I'm still the child of the Most High God. Still righteous, still called, anointed, and appointed. Do you understand? Whether I'm a victim or a criminal, criminal, I am still a child of the Most High God in a special possession to Him. Right? Whether I was wronged or I did wrongdoing, I am still a special position with so much value that he would lay down his life for me. That doesn't change because of my mistakes. His, I am still the beloved of God. Do you understand? When you know your true identity is found in Christ alone, then no matter what new situation you get into, whether it is the thing that you prayed for, an opportunity to be in a space or at a table, and now you feel ill-equipped, unqualified, you know, you feel like an imposter, that doesn't matter when you know who you are and whose you are. My identity, your true identity is found in Christ alone. No place else. Mm. that changes how we walk that changes how we bounce back that helps us to be more resilient because then I know I'm not what people say I am good bad or indifferent sometimes people can call you great things give you great compliments and then you think you're so great and you're so good you're so cool and then you stop doing all the hard work and you're just resting on your reputation or sometimes people are dogging you out putting your name in the mud throwing salt on your name and all of these things, putting no respect on it. And then you can feel like, well, why should I do anything? Because people are still going to say whatever they want to say about me. 
they're still going to say these things about me. No, I'm operating from my identity, not from compliments or complaints. I'm operating from my identity in Christ, and I encourage you to do the same. Second principle, forgiveness is commanded and it's a process. Nobody likes this one, but it doesn't make it less true. Forgiveness is commanded and it's a process. It's a process, man. Like, it's a commandment, right? It is a, something that God is commanding you to do. It's not one of the Ten Commandments, but it's a commandment, right? And it's, and it takes some time. And I say this because sometimes we issue forgiveness based on the motives of the other person whether or not that person has changed their behavior. Like, I will forgive them when they have done this. Sometimes we withhold forgiveness because we're still in pain. We feel like, well, I haven't truly forgiven you if I still have pain. That is not true. I've used this example before. If somebody physically hurts you, right? Like somebody accidentally um, shoots you in the toe, right? You're out hunting, the gun goes off, you get shot in the toe. You know it was an accident. Doesn't change the pain that you experience. <laughs> they are apologizing profusely and you have forgiven them because you know it was an accident. Doesn't mean you still don't need to go and seek medical guidance, help. You don't need to see a medical professional. Doesn't mean you don't need to go to the hospital. Doesn't mean you're not gonna need surgery or physical therapy or whatever. You can still forgive that person and be in pain. The same is true for emotional things. You can forgive a person and still experience the pain from the thing that they've done. You can forgive a person even if you are not completely healed. And the reason I say that is because we are commanded to forgive. Why would God tell you to forgive and give you a consequence to not forgiving and allow for that forgiveness to be based on whether or not the other person has changed? That makes no sense. He says forgive right? Forgive those who have trespassed against you so that your father in heaven will forgive you. And if you don't forgive, neither shall your father in heaven forgive you of your sins. Forgiveness is a commandment. It is contingent upon your own forgiveness, not what you've done to that person, but the things that you have done that are sin. And we all fall short of the glory of God. And so listen, listen, I need to be forgiven. So I want to forgive people even if I'm still mad because it's a process, right? Like forgiveness is a process because it's a process. It doesn't mean that, okay, I forgave you today and I had peace today. Sometimes I forgave you for something and I didn't even had a whole story. So I forgave you for a situation, right? I forgave you um, for a situation. I can't even think of a good one um, because of, oh, women. I forgave you because you cheated on me, right? I forgave him. You cheated. I forgave you. But now I found some new stuff out <laughs> about the same situation that I didn't know before. And so now I'm, now I'm mad again. And now I have to forgive you again for the new stuff, right? It doesn't mean that I never forgave you before. It means like, okay, this new thing is causing me new pain. Or maybe you forgave a friend for betraying you. Or maybe you forgave a friend for dogging you out or whatever for not showing up for you. But then when you saw them show up for somebody else later, you felt hurt by it. You felt hurt all over again. You felt some type of way. Oh, she ain't show up for me to my baby shower, to my wedding, to my, you know, home warming, housewarming, housewarming party. She didn't show up for that, but that other one did something and now she's showing up for her. So maybe you forgave her for not showing up, but now you're seeing her show up for somebody else and you are feeling pain. It's a process. It's forgiveness is a command and it's a process. That's so important on this journey uh, one, because you're going to have to forgive yourself. You are going to have to forgive yourself left and right for the things that you've done, even if you didn't mean to do them unintended. Like, you are going to have to forgive yourself, period, because you're going to make mistakes. You're going to let yourself down. You are going to let other people down. So you need to forgive yourself. It's a command. But you also need to know that even the best people will let you down. 
Courage Molina will let you down. Your spouse is going to let you down. Your pastor is going to let you down if you know him well enough, right? He's going to let you down. Your best friend is going to, like, people are going to let you down. I don't mean to say that people are crappy. I mean to say that people aren't Christ. <laughs> That's what I mean to say here. I'm, I'm saying that people aren't Christ. So you, people are going to let you down. You should have high expectations. Certainly you can have boundaries, but you need to have forgiveness in your back pocket so that you can forgive first, fast, and frequently, okay? You will need to forgive first, fast, and frequently because it is commanded and it's a process. Third principle, faith puts you to work. That's a fundamental truth about faith. <laughs> it's a fundamental truth about faith. It puts you to work. If you have faith, then you have work to do. If you don't have any work to do, I'm struggling to see where you have faith. <laughs> I don't want to say you ain't got faith, even though I low-key think you ain't got faith. But I'm saying, like, if you have faith, it is going to put you to work. When you say, hey, Faith, I'm here, Faith is going to be like word of the day, job, J-O-B. That's the word of the day. Faith does not allow you to be unemployed. You have work to do. And I don't mean unemployment, right? I just mean you have some type of work to do. If you are partnered with Faith, if you have Faith, Faith is going to put y'all behind to work. It's a fundamental truth. Um, James, Jesus' brother, said faith without works is dead just like a so, just like a body without a soul so is faith without works do you know what a body without a soul does nothing faith without works does nothing he's saying that's dead faith so if your faith is alive and well your faith is going to put you to work there is something right faith is the um substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of the, it's what, the things that you hope for, faith is what makes up that stuff. It's what, it's the matter of the thing you hope for. There is something on this courageous life you live in, on this journey, this purpose chasing journey, I know you heard in the intro that I help purpose driven women. You don't have a purpose driven with like, hmm, I don't know what to say to that, right? We all have been given a purpose, but maybe you're not driven by your purpose. And that's another podcast topic for another day. But what I'm saying is when you have purpose, you are believing that God is going to do in and through your life something that hasn't been done before. If you think for a second about your dreams for yourself, the thing that you're working towards, it is something you've never experienced before. And if you're honest, it's something that you doubt is even possible. But because you have faith, you are going to put in the work to take steps towards that thing. That's true in relationships. That's true in your finances. That's true in the work that you've been called to do in your business or in your ministry. You believe that you are going to be at a place that you're not at right now. Healed, married, debt-free, CEO, six-figure, seven-figure business, global ministry, whatever it is. You believe you're going to be to at this place, that God's going to allow you to experience something you haven't experienced, that there's a blessing with your name on it. You believe that even though you don't have any physical proof of that. That's where your faith comes in. And even though I don't have faith that I'm going to be debt free, even I'm sorry, even though that I don't have proof that I'm going to be debt free, I have faith. And because I have faith, I'm going to go to work on this debt. You with me? Even though I don't have physical proof, I don't have any proof that my business is going to be a seven figure business. I have faith. And that faith puts me to work. Get up, record the podcast, post, schedule, pitch, um, email, launch, show up in the marketplace, grow, 
right? All of these things, because I have faith that it's going to happen, it puts me to work. Faith puts you to work. So if you're like, oh, I wonder if my faith is strong. Are you working towards something? You're not working? Okay, well, you probably need to work on your faith, friend. Because faith puts you to work. Um, power principle number four, healthy relationships support you on the journey. Healthy relationships, it's a fundamental truth, right? Healthy relationships support you on the journey. I don't just mean relationships with people. I know that's the first one that we think of, but I mean healthy relationships in all aspects of relationships. The relationships that you, the relationship you have with yourself. Having a healthy relationship with yourself, which is developed through self-care, self-love, boundaries, right? Taking care of it comes through health and wellness. If I'm in a good relationship with myself, my mind, my body, my soul, my spirit. That means I'm well fed, well rested. My mind is well fed. What I'm taking in, my thoughts are positive and healthy. What I say to myself, my body is getting the nutrients that it needs. My mind is getting the support that it needs, like a healthy relationship with myself. When I treat myself as well as I treat Bay. Right, because I love to spoil my husband. He is spoiled. I spoil him. That's the way I like it. Okay. I need to treat myself at the very least as well as I treat him. This is not about how someone treats you. Right? My husband kind of doesn't like my t-shirt. He doesn't like the t-shirt on my own bay. <laughs> he's like, he's like, don't wear that with me. Cause I don't want nobody walking up trying to say what's up. Um, but I have the sweatshirts and the t-shirts. Yep, listen, check that merch out. Let me plug. Go to couragemolina.org and check out the merch, right? I am my own bae. Um, he does not like it when I wear that sweatshirt with him. And so I try not to. But um, it's not about him, right? It's not that he doesn't treat me well. It's not that I'm not spoiled by him. It's that I'm not spoiled by, by myself. I treat him well, he treats me well, I treat myself like crap. That's what I'm talking about, that part. I mean, I don't anymore. I certainly used to. Healthy relationship with myself is going to support me on this journey to greatness. A healthy relationship with the words that come out of my mouth, because I know that my word, the words that come out of my mouth create an environment that I will have to live in life and death lies in your tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. So that means the words that come out your mouth are going out to create an environment that you are going to have to live. You're going to have to live that life you're talking about. I'm so broke. You're going to have to be broke then. You're going to have to live that broke life. Don't nobody like You're going to have to live that life. This can't be done. It ain't going to be able to be done. Right. Having a healthy relationships, having a healthy relationship with my words is going to support me on the journey. And obviously having a healthy relationship with other people, with friends, family, uh, people that you might collaborate with, people out in the marketplace with your spouse. That is going to help you on the journey. Healthy relationships support you on the journey. This greatness will not be achieved in isolation. This greatness that God has called on you, this great work, this great thing that you've been called to will not happen in isolation. I know that sometimes we need to get away and have some time alone, right? I get that. I have an entire room for it. Sometimes we need to be alone, but isolation is something completely different. And this attitude that you don't need any, like that, that crap ain't gonna work, y'all. Not for this courageous life you live in, it doesn't work. Because healthy relationships are the things that are gonna support you on the journey. And you will need support on the journey. Jesus had disciples, but you don't need nobody. Girl, bro. <laughs> Just, it's 
just insane. Um, and last but certainly not least, intentional growth and development is essential to your purpose. Intentional. Do you hear that word? Intentional growth and development is essential for your purpose. Intentional growth. It means it's not like, oh, I was just in a room and I happened to hear this and I learned this. Oh, I watched a movie and I just happened to. No, it means that I have a growth and development plan. My growth and development plan takes place during my morning routine. I am intentional. I know that I need to set up a time. When am I going to work on my growth and development? It's not automatic, y'all. If you don't have a growth and development plan schedule, then your growth will be haphazard at best. Your growth will be haphazard at best. It is not. It, we have to be intentional. So when are you? When are you doing the activities for your growth and development plan? When are you reading books? When are you listening to podcasts with the intention of not just being entertained or filling your head with positive messages, but with the intent to take something from it? learn from it, you feel me? And then go and do something differently or do something new? What, where's that plan? Where is your Bible study plan so that you can grow in your faith? What is your health and wellness routine? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? It requires us to be intentional about our growth and development. Intentionality and growth and development is essential for your purpose. I mean, I just feel like I don't really have a whole lot of explanation for that one because you've never had a billion dollar company before. So do you think you know what it takes to run a seven figure? I don't think so. If you never did it before, I don't think you know how to do it. So I think you probably need to be intentional about growing in your knowledge and your understanding of what it takes to run a business like that. Have you ever run a ministry, a global ministry that reaches hundreds, thousands, millions of women all over the world? No. You, you probably need to learn something to equip you to lead, you know, with excellence. I mean, we have got to be intentional, even in relationships, like constantly, like we have to have this commitment to constantly growing, not constantly just learning. That's why, that's why this last principle isn't learning because the principle is about the growth. Growth requires learning. Learning does not mean that you've grown. I've learned a lot of things that did not help me to grow. <laughs> I know a lot of songs, they haven't necessarily helped me to grow. I mean, I know some songs that certainly have not helped me to grow in any way, shape, or form. They have just been purely entertaining, all right? And so I want to leave you with this, right? I, I know I used to give you assignments all the time, but um, on this one, I just, I just want you to take some time to think think about and journal um, about the power principles, right? So there's going to be some journal prompts for each. There's going to be a journal prompt for each principle in the show notes. Just to help you take some time to think, I'd like for you to take just one um, principle a day to journal and think about. I'd love for you to join me in the Dose of Courage community and share any ahas that you got either from the podcast, um, you can drop it in the comments if you're watching it on YouTube, or even anything that you realize during your journaling that you want to share, right? So thanks again for listening to the podcast. I absolutely love y'all. And until next time, love you. Later. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Dose of Courage podcast. I hope that you feel bolder, more confident, and courageous after listening to this episode. If you loved it, say so. And Love in the Podcast World is a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. And it's also by sharing it on social media and tagging us at Dose of Courage and 
at Courage Molina. I love y'all. And as always, go out and make this day a courageous one.